So, Johannes, we're now on the production line for the Zerian tractors. Yep. And I've got to say, on the way here, it is quite distracting when you walk through Harsvinkel, isn't it? Because we've just seen where all the combines are built, yep. which is a ginormous uh, production line. We've just seen where the forages, the legendary Jaguars are built. Uh, there's a lot going on here, yep. but we're here to focus on the Zerians. So let's have a wander up yep. here. We'll see how the Zerians are built, yep. basically. Yeah, so this is... is Initial stages. Yes, that's actually where it starts here. That's our first stand on the production line. You can see behind there, that's the, the main frame, the main chassis of the Xerion. And we can see here also our two steered axles. And this is basically where they bring it together. So where we assemble first the frame with the axles, we get here the rear part of the Xerion, in this case here with the rear linkage and uh, then we roll it forward for, for the next steps. So. so we move down the line a little bit further. So on to the next stage. Where are we up to here, Johannes? Yeah, here next step is we start assembly of the first hydraulic components. We can see over in the, in the rear and then we also see rear linkage. We see the first uh, assemblies of the pneumatic system for trailer brakes and so on. So here we see already a little bit more uh, what it will be at the end. Yeah, so yeah, it's so starting to come starts together Starts getting now. a tractor. Yeah. Then we have here a little bit more sub-assemblies. You see more wires coming ah, in, some more, electronics more pipes now. and so on. Really what's what in the, in the heart of the machine. Yeah. Uh, and it's basically the preparation for the next huge step, which is then uh, getting the engine on, yeah. on to, to the chassis. So she's got an engine now. Yes. Engines come in. Yeah, engines coming in. We also see the, the big cooling package here where we see from the, from the way we do it, it's, uh, it's on top cooling package. So we don't go in this here sandwich uh, design, what you All also right, see so on you standard. Stack yours we like that and keep that as yes, thin as possible. Exactly. Get, keep the air flowing. We basically. only have the, the coolers for the axles, for air conditioning and so on in front. But basically it's uh, uh, for, for the efficiency, for the airflow going through. Uh, you will have losses if it's a uh, uh, stack cooler, then you have a sandwich where you right. will need to have the first coolers getting the cold air, but the second or the third one, they already get pre-warmed yeah. air. The engine is now also in. Yeah. Um, Engine-wise, is it Mercedes in these? Yes, we're yeah. all Mercedes engines. So from the 4200 to the big 12650, it's all Mercedes engines. On the 12 series, we are on a 15.6 liters engine. Right. And I suppose now looking at the side <coughs> of the machine here with a few more components in it, yeah. I suppose another advantage with the rigid chassis is the fact that you can place your components where you want them in terms of trying to get that perfect balance. Exactly. You've, not, you've not got to put most of them over here and not many over there. You can put them kind of where you want. We, we can puzzle a little bit, let's say, yeah. to, to have it where we want. And what you see here... Um, Mainly application for the for the Xerion 5000 is uh, when we come to heavy PTO work. When we look at this here, you have the, the the drive shaft coming out of the engine. It's going straight through the transmission. We just have this real uh, little right. So that's for the PTO. To that. the, so it's a rather the straight PTO shaft, which is also giving you a high power output on the PTO o gearbox and uh, a high efficiency at yeah. the end. Is that kind of a, one of the sort of like design philosophies that's kind of carried through since the early days? You've tried to keep that, that drive line efficiency? We, we could say so. That's basically um, here one of the overarching goals, what we always have with all our tractors and all our machines. It doesn't matter if it's a combine or a Jag or a Xerion, is that we are always working on highest efficiency for our customer because here fuel is not for free. Helmut Klaas always had the philosophy that yeah, the, the efficiency at the end, what you make out of one horsepower installed, that's what counts. Yeah. You're at 650. Yeah. Why 650? It's, uh, with 650, we are pretty confident uh, that we are on the right spot in the market. Oh, that's, okay. that's where basically is still a bulk of the market the is acting. Selling, right. The volume selling. The volume selling and uh, where we are convinced that this is really the right spot for us to be. Yeah. So it's starting to take even more shape, hidden in there. Obviously, we've got the transmission there. That's yeah. still ZF, is it? Yeah. It's still a ZF yeah. gearbox, 5.5. Yeah. And key to being able to handle 
well manage the power and torque through the transmission this will be this component here is it that you, exactly. guys, that you guys make at Paderborn that piece yeah that's what we do in Paderborn what we call a pump transfer gearbox mm. so on the Xerion 12 series it has two tasks one is we basically speed up the engine output to go with the higher RPM into the gearbox and the second task is uh, it is a pump drive right. so for for people uh, who are doing heavy hydraulic applications, we can now go up to three independent hydraulic pumps. We can supply more than 536 liters per minute hydraulic yeah. oil. What we also have to say from the concept, yeah, there is not a lot of implements out on the market which really require more than 500 mm. liters per minute oil. But what is our philosophy? High efficiency. And how do we do that? If we say we can, the demand, what we have on the hydraulics is around 400, 420, 440 liters. That enables us that we can reduce engine speed. And that's uh, basically very fuel efficient. And speaking of layout, as we were before, yeah. obviously you've got your fuel tanks almost dead center of the machine. So presumably as they're running down, the balance is then, it's not shifted. Exactly, that's uh, uh, one part of the philosophies uh, over there. We see here then the, the new uh, biggest tank of the Xerion where we have some parts of it in the rear of the cabin. Ah, so you've put but some. still it's in the center of the machine so the weight balance is not that much changing. Cool, right, moving on down and it is, it's really taking shape now. Yeah, here that's the, the last uh, part uh, before we go to the test bench, so we see here the filling stations where all the oil, uh, fuels and so on are filled to the machine. And the next step is uh, putting it on the, on the test bench. Right, so it's almost done at this point, pretty much. More or less, it's or less. done, it's, right. it's functional. Uh, <laughs> and then here you see the, uh, all the uh, measurement equipment to do the test runs, where we uh, go through the whole machine, we give it the software what it needs, and then off the line. And that's it. So every single machine will be, will go through a testing yeah. process. We have a 100% uh, test on the line uh, for all the major functions. We also do really a test drive out on the, on the test track. And here it is. And here it is. It's nearly ready. The finished article. shipment. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for well, showing us around. That has been absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much for that piece and we'll move on.